So we've got three new kits for Necrons, Admech and Striking Scorpions, two Codex reveals and plenty of rules within, plus terrain and the promise of more models on their way. Let's talk about Games Workshop's big preview for their Warhammer Day celebrations. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today Games Workshop have given us really quite a lot of new fun stuff to take a look at. This was coming from the previews for their Warhammer Fest preview online, alongside a few other things like some old world content in Age of Sigmar. They've shown off a bunch of really quite good stuff for Warhammer 40k, a couple of really classic miniatures getting reinterpreted and being saved from Finecast, and a fair bit more besides. Going through what we've got by faction, for the Necrons we've got a new codex, the detachment names from that codex, plus some data sheets, clarifications, and some rules, and that rather new Stasi Imitet the Snorblor miniature. For the Adeptus Mechanicus, we've got the stilt-legged Scatros Sniper, with his weapon profiles for his new gun, plus the new codex and detachment names once more, and a few rules previewed for their stealthy type detachments. Otherwise, for Kill Team, it does indeed seem that that's where the new Space Marine Scouts are going to be coming out, and they're going to be coming out alongside some striking scorpions for the Eldar. Games Workshop are finally making their way towards making all the aspects plastic, though they do have quite a way to go yet, and it seems that the Scouts and the Scorpions will be fighting it out over some new drill rig type terrain that's coming out alongside a Kill Team box called Kill Team Salvation, so it does mean that those miniatures might be a little way before they release individually. Let's go through all the reveals one by one, and any interesting details from Games Workshop's live stream that they told us about them. First up, we've got Imitek the Stormlord, a Necron Overlord of the Sotek Dynasty, I'd say he's perhaps one of the better known special characters for the Necrons, given that he was one of the earlier ones that they released in one of their previous codexes. He's generally a fairly potent combatant, with his Staff of the Destroyer and Gauntlet of Fire, and his signature move throughout the editions has often been to call down lightning on the enemy army in one form or another, and he can still do that now. Games Workshop has converted this miniature from resin to plastic, which is perhaps good news for him. They have been gradually phasing out their fine cast range of miniatures, so I guess that keeps him safe for the new codex. I feel like the miniature is pretty nice and effective, keeps a lot of the theming of the old one, plus looks maybe a little bit more actively malevolent and alive compared with a few of the other Necrons. I guess that perhaps comes with the overall constructs that are much better than the rank and file. I think the way that they've painted his cloak is quite fun on this one as well. As best I can tell though, I don't think that this one actually answers the rumour engine that we saw for the Necrons already. Looks like that might still be to come. Today they confirmed that Necrons wouldn't just be getting one single new miniature, but also at least one more as well. They'd heavily hinted that at least one would be Oricon the Diviner, but I guess there's always the possibility for more good stuff, others of their unique characters getting re-sculpted, or new things for maybe the Standard Lord or the Locust Lord perhaps. I think Imitech's really quite a cool character to redo though. His rough lore is that he was one of the first overlords to reawaken, he managed to land grab really quite a lot of the Necrite Empire while the Silent King was still in slumber, and has a history of fighting really quite a lot of threats around the galaxy, though perhaps most notably the Black Templars where he dueled High Marshal Helbrecht. We've also got another couple of pictures of him, again quite a fun cloak there, and it looks like he's got some scarabs built into that. And according to what they were saying in the article, it did imply that he's still going to be generating command points as he does at the moment in the new Necron Codex. He's perhaps a little bit of a weird character in the current book, in that he just generates command points for you if he's in your army, but he doesn't actually do that much for leading his unit besides just adding his combat stats, plus his ability to call the storm. I feel like he's perhaps not that far from where he needs to be, though he perhaps struggles to compete with the Resurrection Orb style characters, who are really quite nice for regenerating mass amounts of Warriors or Lich Guard. Here's the new miniature versus the old miniature, generally keeping the same sort of theme and style I think, most of the same things. Most of the features and the posing of the miniature are fairly similar. I think of the two, I probably prefer the new one slightly more than the old, but maybe not too much in it. Otherwise for Necrons though, they did give us some rather juicy details about the Codex. Previously they'd had this build as Winter 2023, and I noticed in the article they mentioned that the fourth Codex of 40k to come out would be Necrons, so that kind of implies that it would be after Admech, not before. Looks like they've slightly changed up the cover art for the Codex, having a bit more of a greyer background for the Codex, and the art's been changed up from the Scorpec Lord that was on the last one. As with everything else in 40k, looks like probably the most interesting thing that the Codex will add will be the updated detachments, and it seems that Codex Necrons is going to have 5 of those, so slightly less than the Space Marines and the Tyranids got. As expected, the Awakened Dynasty is still going to be returning from the Index, I guess that this one in hindsight will be wound up as seeing the one that focuses around leaders and units with the plus one to hit. 
and then that one's going to be joined by a bunch of more specific and niche ones, the Canoptic Cohort, which will feature around Cryptex and their Canoptic Constructs, the Hypercrypt Legion will be a teleport support style one, we do have some previews for that, and it sounds like that one's going to play quite similarly to how the Grey Knights do at the moment, the Annihilation Legion, which I think is a name that we've heard before, that one was one of the formations for them in 9th edition, and that's going to focus around the Mad Necrons with the Destroyers and the Flayed Ones, and finally something called the Abasance Phalanx, this one says characters leading on the front line with it, which is perhaps a little bit less clear, I feel like we've already got a fairly character focused one on the Awakened Dynasty, maybe the focus might be more on the characters dealing big damage themselves as opposed to their leadership abilities perhaps, for the data sheets, apparently they're going to be 47 data sheets in the codex, currently I believe there's 51 if I'm reading right, and that would imply that 4 of them could be lost going from the index to the codex, currently I think there are a few Necrons that don't have a current model out, the standard Necron Lord and the Locust Lord could be on the chopping block if Games Workshop don't update them, and besides that I guess the most at risk could be the other Necron Finecast characters if they got rotated out, or I guess perhaps the Cryptothral status as an independent unit, they might get bundled in with the Plasmanta that they're packaged with. As for other things, they also said there'd be tweaks and updates to various data sheets and rules. I'd probably guess that they might be fairly minor, like the things that the Space Marines and Tyranids had, but I guess as we go into the edition, there's more chance of them making more radical revisions. Otherwise, for the Necrons, we did get some fun rules previews as well. As mentioned, the Hypercrypt Legion got most of the focus. This one sounds like it's the one that focuses around the teleportation type things, so I guess that could be a Nephrek focus type one maybe. Necrons phasing in and out of existence and coming in around the board at unexpected angles. Their core rule sounds like it's a rule very similar to the Grey Knights, allowing units to disappear into strategic reserve, and then coming back the next turn to strike from an unexpected angle. One of their stratagems seems to double down on the monolith type ability, a 2 command point ability for when a unit takes casualties to teleport them to within 6 inches of a monolith. That one seems fun and I guess situationally kind of powerful, though maybe not one that you usually build around trying to use. I guess you could potentially have a powerful shooting unit locked up in combat and this could get them out, or you could have some scary damage dealers that have just jumped into the enemy's lines and killed some stuff, and then if the enemy starts to take reprisals, then after the first unit has shot and killed one, then you maybe could get them back to safety. Definitely looks like some fun movement shenanigans, but at 2 CP that comes with a really quite big cost, and it doesn't appear to be a battle tactic. Finally, we've got one enhancement from the Annihilation Legion, so that's the Flayed One and Destroyer formation, and this one is called Eternal Madness. This one's basically models in the bearer's unit fight on death on a 4 plus, basically making it a risky prospect to try and scrub out the unit in combat, particularly if it's something scary like some Lich Guard or some Scorpet Destroyers or something. I feel like this is one of those ones that's okay if it's fairly cheap, maybe going to be a bit whatever if it isn't. If the enemy is a primary melee army, then it's generally going to be a good thing. If they're primarily ranged, then it's probably not going to do anything. Overall, it should be kind of interesting to see what sort of things they come out with for the Necrons, though. Hopefully they have a fair few more interesting ways to play it once the Codex is out, and these detachments are at least somewhat balanced. I feel like they did okay to get the Tyranids ones at least somewhat in line with each of them. Most of them are at least fairly playable. Over to the Adeptus Mechanicus next, though, and their crazy new model is the Sidonian Scatros. This one's basically a weird stilt led sniper of a model, as ever with Abmech doing weird new body horror things to their new Skitari recruits. The model really is quite a weird one, definitely very out there. I must admit I do quite like it though, stood on just two enormous ridiculously elongated legs. It looks like he's got an extra bionic loading arm as well with a cartridge ready to put in the chamber. Lenses for eyes, then more lenses to pull down on top of those and plus a targeting lens on the barrel itself, and seems like he's keeping in communication with the rest of the force with his data tether as well. Apparently the idea behind these is that they just stay in one place for an enormous amount of time, basically functioning as a little Skatari area denial watchtower pretty much. The idea is that it keeps disturbingly still, and is generally going to see the enemy before they seize him with all that observation equipment. I feel like the miniature is probably going to divide opinion a bit, though I do quite like it myself. Can't help but think that it's probably going to be a fairly fragile one with those two very thin legs though. We do have a few more pictures of the miniature as well, including the back of it, where you can see the additional limbs that are attached to his backpack there, plus the option for a more visored helm on the one on the bottom on the left there, plus the two different options of sniper rifle that you can choose to equip him with. 
Rules-wise, despite standing weirdly tall indeed, he still has the Lone Operative special rule, which is maybe going to be a bit strange when he's standing out like a sword thumb on the other side of the battlefield and your opponent can't shoot him. And even if you do get within 12 inches, he's also going to have the stealth keyword on top of that, so should be relatively secure to keep on firing with impunity. In general, cheap loan operatives are really quite nice to have in just about any 40k army, very nice for standing on objectives and guaranteeing that you can't destroy them, and can be okay to start off in reserves as well, turning up to do secondary objectives and things, and then just being nuisance units for the opponents to deal with. We don't know his points cost yet, though Games Workshop did tell us that he would cost a little bit less than a standard Vindicare. That does seem to make sense, given that the gun at first glance doesn't look anywhere near as powerful. But at the same time, I suppose we won't know until we've found out the full data sheet and his special rules, and also how cheap he is, as if he's very cheap, it doesn't have to be that great anyway. It seems for this guy, we've got the choice between the Radium Jezel and the Scatros Transuranic Arquebus, basically the sniper from the Sindonian Dragoon and the Skitari Ranger Squad, respectively. For this guy, they both have a 36 inch range and hit on a 3 plus with heavy, so a 2 plus if he's stationary. They both have precision, as you'd expect from sniper rifles, and then it tailors to either being better against infantry or better against monsters and vehicles. The Jezel gets anti infantry 3 plus and a flat damage 3, but only has strength 5. The Arquebus gets anti monster and anti vehicle 4 plus and gets strength 7 as well, so it'll usually be wounding infantry on a 3 plus but it only has a damage characteristic of D3, so wounds that you get through onto your target aren't going to be quite as effective. Finally, we've got the preview of its special rule, which is a kill an eye. This means that you get to re-roll wound rolls against its chosen prey. I don't know if by chosen prey they just mean anything that it shoots at, or the things that it's got the anti-keywords against. Either way, it should be fairly good though. But I feel like with these kind of profiles, this guy will probably wind up being at least fairly cheap, wouldn't be too surprised to see him somewhere in the region of 50 to 60 points maybe. Hopefully he winds up being a better pig overall than the Vindicare Assassin, as I guess he will have some direct competition from him. Otherwise for the Adeptus Mechanicus, we've got the new Codex coming out, and this one's going to be in Winter 2023 according to the previous previews. And this one does seem to feature the same sort of Codex art on the front, though again with a slightly different background imposed on it featuring the army's icon. Like the Necrons, it's going to be an army of five detachments. Again, like the Necrons, also maybe dropping from a famous six Forge worlds to five, I suppose. Though once more, these are going to be more army archetypes. We've got the five detachment names, which are going to be the Skitari Hunter Cohort. They're going to be stealth Skitari, so maybe slightly studies themed, perhaps. It seems that the current Rad Cohort has been renamed to the Rad Zone Cohort, at least by the preview text anyway and they have confirmed that that's getting some sort of update to the rules for its radiation bombardment, which I think will probably be quite welcome news to the Abmech players, given that it's not really all that great right now. Perhaps one of the single worst attachment rules in all of Warhammer 40k. Otherwise, the Cybernetica cohort is going to be helping out Castellan robots somehow. Hopefully that's at least somewhat general purpose, given that if it was just themed around that one unit, that would be a bit of a strange skew list, though I guess not too bad if you've got loads of them. There's one that's going to be called a Data Psalm Conclave that's going to be focused around Tech Priest and I guess the Court Mechanicus. And finally one called the Explorator Maniple. The only thing that they wrote about that is that it's going to be some sort of way that you can recover Archaeotech around the board. Not really too sure what that's going to encourage unit wise. Could perhaps be something speed or transport related maybe. Besides that they confirm that there's 30 data sheets in the codex. That does tally with the current 29 that they've got plus the addition of the Scatros. I guess that implies that there's no other models coming for them alongside the Codex, and if the Necron Codex is right, then it looks like their Codex will be before the Necron one. will be interesting to see if they do have any sort of big versus box thing that might be the first place to get the Scatros plus Imitate the Stormlord maybe. Otherwise, again with the Necron Codex, they said that there's plenty of tweaks and changes to datasheets and rules, but didn't go into any sort of details on the actual datasheets. The rules that they did show off for the Abmeg though were for the Skitari Hunter Cohort. They gave us the core rule and the Binary Defense Stratagem. And it sounds like this one is the detachment that's roughly following in the same sort of theme as Stygis. Focusing on the Skitari aspect of the army as opposed to the Court Mechanicus and helping them out with stealth tricks. The core rule is that Skitari infantry, mounted units and iron striders all get stealth. And they also all get cover if they're outside of 12 inches of the enemy as well. But the stealth isn't dependent on that so they get that wherever. Overall, it's definitely not a bad rule. Both of those are really quite nice damage debuffs at range. It just does kind of depend on your opponent actually fighting you at range, as it's not really going to do you any good if you're fighting in close combat against them. 
The cover bit is maybe just a bit more helpful for positioning, given that it's not too hard to get cover on plenty of units in 10th edition at the moment, and the minus 1 debuff is going to be a bit better against units with lower ballistic skill. It does feel it's a little bit sad that it's only relevant to Skitari, and only some of the Skitari as well, which isn't usually that great to just take a rule that only really helps units out of one section of the codex. I guess you're going to be fielding a lot of Skitari foot troops, their fast attack, and their rust stalkers and infiltrators if you're running this army. Otherwise, the stratagem for the same formation is the Binaric Offense. This allows two Skitari units to both get an extra AP-1 if they attack one unit and one unit only, and you can use it when you're shooting or fighting. Honestly, I'm not too convinced about that for 2 CP. AP-1 is nice enough, but I'm not sure if that's going to be wieldy enough to make it worth it most of the time. I guess you want to be using it on the two most threatening Skitari units that you have around, Probably things like Scorpius Disintegrators, perhaps. Though I guess it could be alright on mass volumes of low AP stuff, like maybe a bunch of Sterilizer Fire. I feel like it's going to be a bit unwieldy to use in combat most of the time. At 2 CP, I'd hope there's probably going to be some better things, as I don't think that that's going to get used all that much, really. In any case, really nice to have a few new hints of some new rules. Hopefully that some of the other things can add a few genuinely viable options to play Ambeck with. And I feel like the news that the Rad Cohort is being rewritten is probably a good thing as well. That definitely feels like it's been a factor as to why they've been struggling a bit in 40k so far. Finally, for the bigger miniature reveals, we've got the Eldar Striking Scorpions. Finally, another one of their aspects is Rescued from Finecast. And it looks like these guys are going to be coming back as a kill team box to start with. Though apparently the kill team box is going to be made up of two squads of five of them, so I'd guess they might be eventually sold as individual boxes of five eventually. These guys along with the other aspects have definitely long awaited new models, really good that Games Workshop has finally chosen to get round to doing them, and do seem kind of a good choice for a kill team release as well, striking from the shadows and infiltrating up the board seems to be what they usually like to do in 40k. I'm sure Striking Scorpions are fairly familiar to a lot of people, slightly more heavily armoured Eldar that infiltrate and fight with Chainsword and Shuriken Pistol, quite famed for their savagery as far as Space Elves go, and they have the extra little sting in the tail of their Manda Blasters mounted either side of their heads, packing an extra little punch that the opponent might not be expecting. I think they've done pretty well with the new models, these guys very much feel similar to the classic ones that came in Finecast, but nice to have them rendered in plastic with a lot more flexibility and being a much nicer material to work with. Plus would help out with the details a bit more. And apparently there's a fair bit more flexibility and posability built into the squad itself. The squad's initially going to be releasing in a box set called Kill Team Salvation that we'll talk about in just a second. Though it does mean that these Viking Scorpions won't be releasing individually for a fair while at least. Usually after that comes out, the individual kit tends to come along somewhere between 2 and 6 months after. Though it might be interesting to see how they go about releasing these guys, as as they mentioned, it's going to be two sets of five making one kill team. It doesn't immediately look like there's any other extra sprues thrown in for any sort of specialist options within the squad. I'd guess that if there's still two sets of five within here, then it probably means that you would still be able to fill them in five. Might be a bit sad if they got the same as the Orc Commandos and had to fill them in tens only. Though I guess if they are being released for Kill Team and Games Workshop might want you to get 10 of them for that, then there's at least a good chance they might come out with a 10-man Kill Team box set, which could be a better value than buying two sets of five individually, I suspect. I guess we'll watch that space for release details later. Otherwise, the only things they confirmed in terms of options were the standard choices for the Exarchs, the Paired Chain Sabers, the Scorpion Claw, or the Biting Blade. So basically not really messing with the formula too much, and just sticking with the classic options that they've had from days past. Perhaps the biggest experiment that they've done with these guys, as with a few of the other Eldar aspects, is they've given them their standard helmeted heads, or given them the option of bare-faced or half-helm heads. I'll be honest, I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of these ones, with their little slightly conical things perching on their hairdos there. I guess the idea is that these ones could fit in fairly well with Inari, though I'd absolutely definitely assemble them with the helmets myself. As for how they're initially going to be released, it's going to be in this Kill Team Salvation box set, where they'll be going alongside Scouts. These ones are painted up as Raven Guard, it would seem. And Games Workshop confirmed that this will be the first place that you can get the new Scout kit, so as suspected, it does look like these scouts aren't going to be coming out as an individual box set anytime particularly soon. Maybe slight bad news there if you wanted to pick up the scouts but didn't really have any interest in the scorpions. It doesn't appear that the scouts have any sort of extra upgrade frame included either. Looks like their standard kit does have a few of the options that might be consistent with kill teams, like one being built as a sniper, 
and it does look like the sergeant gets a grapnel launcher anyway, which didn't have any 40k rules. Apparently the kill team that you get here is just two copies of the standard scout kit, even though that one does admittedly have extensive options. Interestingly, for a kill team release, rather than being bundled with an excessive amount of terrain like the rest of them, it is just literally going to be the scouts versus the striking scorpions this time round. You only get a few tiny bits of flavour terrain that you can see on the top right hand corner. You don't get an entire battle zone worth of terrain to add to the table, as I guess it might be a little bit excessive if you were picking up multiple of these kill team releases, and you might eventually get into the point where you've got far more terrain than you need. Might be kind of good news in that it could bring down the price of the box set a bit. I guess we'll have to wait and see by how much. For the kill team rules, they did also mention that the Eldar kill team could mix other operatives like the Howling Banshees and the Dire Avengers into the kill team and take a mix of those with the Striking Scorpions or take pure kill teams of each. I thought that was kind of fun. Finally, for model releases, they did also show off this terrain that they're coming out with. This one is aimed at Kill Team, and I guess this is what the Salvation box set would have been with if they'd lumbered it all together again. The idea behind this one is that it's a battle mat plus some raised platforms, and it's kind of trying to represent a 40k oil rig at sea on an ocean world. This one sounds quite fun. Not sure if it's going to be the idea for the next four Kill Team boxes as we had with the Gallo Dark. Apparently the law progression is that the Galadark fell into an ocean world pretty much, and the action seems to have been taken to oil rigs and things above the waves. Not sure how massively practical the terrain might be for Warhammer 40k, definitely could give you a more narrative game with quite a good theme though. Kind of fun to have the idea of some areas of the battlefield being no-go areas, unless you're jumping between the platforms or something. In any case, quite a lot of good stuff today I think, new models for three different factions and two codexes announced with some actual OK rules previews attached. I feel like Games Workshop can be a bit stingy sometimes with the rules previews, it makes it much more interesting when they announce codexes when they do tell us a little bit about what's coming in them. Let me know all your thoughts on the releases and anything else that I might have missed, look forward to hearing your ideas down in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics while well, certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.